morning and welcome to another episode of WLTV. And thank you for those videos, Lyda. All these videos brought to you from Snowball's virtual talent show. And just a reminder to vote on... There are some amazing and inspirational egos in our district. Through this pandemic, we know it's been a struggle, but you guys have been doing great. Keep it up and just keep smiling. As the sports seasons finally started at Leiden, we have several stories from our WLTV crew about our teams and players and how they try to stay active and handle their compressed season. COVID has changed a lot of things in school, and one of those things is the schedule for sports. All sports seasons were postponed, which means that there are some athletes who are currently competing in two sports at once. Jonathan Chavez, a two-sport athlete at Leiden who is in basketball and volleyball, has had his seasons overlap, which has been a bit rough, but he's able to push through it. So it's really tiring coming home from both practices, from basketball and volleyball. Also, I work in the weekends. I work at Chili, so it's been really tough for me, but my senior year, so I might as well go all in. Even while playing two sports, the players are still able to be positive. It's really exhausting uh, doing both sports and also balancing that that with school. It's been really tough for me, but my teachers have been helping me out and it's and it's been going all right. Um, good thing is that the coaches are very understanding. They understand that I might be tired coming in from soccer or from volleyball, so they either tell me, oh, if you're too tired, just don't come to practice. Uh, so playing both sports really helped with my vertical. It also really helped with basketball, with my blocking, my rebounds, and my dunking. It's just really helped me a lot. Because these sports have been moved, things are different this year, and some students may be wondering how the school is handling everything. Mr. Mason, who is the sports director at Leiden, answered some questions about the athletes who are currently playing two sports. So I think the biggest uh, thing that we've stressed to our coaches and to the kids is to be flexible. Um, I think, you know, typically we do not allow students to participate in two sports at the same time because it's, it's really difficult to be in two places at one time. Mr. Mason also gave his thoughts on how well the teachers and coaches have been through this. We've tried to make it work as, as best we can, and I think the coaches have done a nice job by giving athletes the flexibility to make sure that they can um, go to games for both sports that they would be in and split up their practice time as best they can. Um, but we also don't want athletes to get burned out either, so I think it's just making sure that, um, that they're able to balance their time. He also talked a bit about the plans for next year's sports. Yeah, we're always, uh, we're always planning for next year. We don't know exactly what it's going to look like, um, but we're hoping that uh, at least in terms of the calendar of sports and when the sports happen, that it'll be back to the traditional uh, fall, winter, and spring season. Light and football wrapped up their home games with a special senior night. Senior Elijah Diblick talks about his stats against Addison Trail and his future with football as he heads off to college. My senior night was good. It was good to be there and see my family and friends there with me. Uh, the game, we we come out with a win against Addison Trail. I was able to get 104 yards and a touchdown to help the team out, and it was a good way to end my season at Lightning. I played for six years my whole life. I played two years when I was in like sixth and seventh grade at Lightning Bears, and then I played uh, all four years at Lightning. Um, the plan is to play maybe sophomore year, and the reason is because I love the sport so much, and I don't want to let it go yet, and I just want to see what happens and where the sport could take me. I feel like football is many different from other sports because of the physical aspect of it. Also, the bond we've created with like some of the teams and some of my guys have been like no other. Also, because the sport is very popular, I feel like, so at the games, there's many fans to cheer you on. Elijah's number one supporter, Mrs. Ziblick, remembers the day Elijah discovered his interest in football. She feels proud of how far he has come, even if it means the day she has to say goodbye is getting closer. Season came around one year and he wanted to join as many of his baseball friends were going to play and he asked if he could play. I was nervous but I was excited for him to try something new. Senior night was an awesome night not just for Elijah but for his teammates and his friends just connecting, completing plays, having fun. I will miss him so much and it'll be different not having him around but I couldn't be any more prouder of him, who he's become and I can't wait to see what the future holds for him. Senior Darius Serdan had to cut his season short due to injuries. Although he won't be continuing his football career, he is very happy with the memories he has from senior night. Um, the week of senior night 
it was in practice I injured my hamstring and unfortunately I wasn't allowed to play due to the trainer's decision. I will not continue to play football in college because football was always a hobby of mine rather than a lifestyle. Congratulations to the football team on their big win against Addison Trail and hopefully they finish their season strong. For WLTV, this is Kiara Fuentes. Thanks for the reporting, Kiara, Yudira, Vin, and Fernando. Yes, and congrats to all the players and athletes this week. For our next story, Cassie and I looked into students adjusted to not having PE classes and staying fit during the pandemic. Working out during COVID is hard enough with limited spaces at public gyms, but on the other hand, because of COVID, the West Lighting Gym is looking very deserted. It's important to stay active and get a workout during these difficult times. Yeah, it's key, man. Yeah. It really is. It's, it's, it's good for everyone. According to helpguide.org, being fit can help resist getting COVID. Even going outside can play a big role in staying fit. Mr. Anderson gives us some advice to stay active. There's so many things that you can do with just body weight in general that uh, can be a great full body workout. I always tell my kids in my class, if you get an upper body push, upper body pull, lower body push, lower body pull, and some type of a core move, you've got a great workout on your hands. Make sure you're moving every 15, 20 minutes, but just getting out and walk, getting fresh air, getting sunlight. Those are the best it possibly can be during a pandemic. Working out has many positive outcomes. Helpguide.org and the CDC say that exercise can help ease depression, stress, and anxiety. Emily Collier expresses how she feels working out during the pandemic and gives ideas on how to start. So, I mean, just going to the gym just like once or twice a week is just something, and it just makes you like feel better and stuff, and during COVID, there's not really much to do. So, you know, we all have a gym right now. It's just join gym every, uh, whatever day you have, and just do that. That can be one way to get started too. And there's a lot of like videos on YouTube and stuff that you can do without equipment, so there's that too. Gyms have taken multiple steps to make working out as safe as possible. They even made it so you could only work out at the gym if you had an appointment. Gyms also make it a requirement to wear a mask. The Mayo Clinic acknowledges how to wear a mask correctly and how they protect against COVID. Emily talks about the protocols you have to follow at the gym. We have towels and cleaning bottles uh, to wipe off equipment before we use them. And then afterwards, we wipe them off too. And then obviously when I come home, I'm going to wash my hands. Exercise is not only good for your body, but also your mind. For WTV, this is Adrian Medina and Cassidy Allen. I think we forgot something. Oh yeah, for our final piece this week, Hobby and Stop explored the world of exotic pet owners. When people think about exotic pets like reptiles, most of the time they are stereotyped as dangerous, time consuming, and expensive. However, statistics show that about 1 in 10 people own exotic pets according to the American Veterinarian Medical Association. One of these exotic pet owners, Magic Bosco, recently got into this trend and like most enthusiasts, started with something small. I got my pet Gecko from my local PetSmart uh, to make sure that he's not hostile to others and that he's healthy. I recommend getting this Leopard Gecko because it's like a beginner level pet to have. He's fun to play with, he could climb on you, and it's easy to take care of. Now Javi will tell us more about what to look out for when purchasing a snake. You always have to like look out for how how they look, especially an animal and how they behave. Before purchasing one, you might want to like ask the, the store clerk or something, be like, if they can hold it and make sure they're not too aggressive or anything. But at the same time, you also want to look at if they have like any scratches or marks on them, make sure they haven't been like in really bad shape. So the real question is, is it worth it having an exotic pet? In all honesty, I definitely would recommend any sort of reptile, say a snake or a gecko or whatever. They are seen like as a nasty animal. They're stereotyped a lot. I could definitely see that, but in all honesty, they're not, they're not that bad. They are very docile, very friendly. You know, I just gotta take care of them. They'll be nice to you. Well, thanks for that reporting, guys. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's WLTV. Thanks for watching and signing off till next time. This is Adrian. And Cassidy. And don't forget, go, go Eagles! Eagles!